This is our pick version, and this is Jason Wendell. He's a medical intuitive. He's a psychic. He's a hell of a good guy. Um, and he's going to give us today not only intuitive picks, psychic picks. He's going to give us informed picks. He is a professional football prognosticator from a long time, and he's going to let us know a little bit about the game from an informed place and then from an intuitive place. So without further ado, actually, I'll tell the story about mind reading last week because I've already told it twice and edits we're not going to read, but mind reading is real. And even though it's real, which I'll tell you about next week, Heather wants to tell you to be careful with the information you hear here. Go ahead, honey. Picks are made and presented for entertainment purposes only. Shit to grit and its participants. Shoot. Just Sh keep going. Shit. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Picks are made and presented for entertainment purposes only. Shit to Grit and its participants expressly assumes no responsibility or liability for any and all actions taken within these picks. Play okay. responsibly. All right. We're going to roll this down. You guys have fun with this. This is a mood piece. This is, this is theater right here. So enjoy yourselves. Okay, Jason. Are you ready? Ready. The first game is the Carolina Panthers and Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta favored by three and a half points. The over and under very low at 39 and a half. Jason, we'd like you to go into your intuition. David, take it away. Jason, what signals are you getting? For this Carolina Atlanta game, the immediate thing that I got was red and black. Um, uh, we're going to pick Atlanta to win this game. Okay, that was notice it was immediate. So you really don't need any prompts. These, what do you see? What do you hear? You do it yourself. No, it just yeah, comes. It's, it just, it's just coming. Anything besides the senses, like seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling, or those are the four? <laughs> That's pretty much the four. Um, okay. And more often than not, it's the what am I seeing? I get I get flash images. So got it. This kind of leads okay. to those. Got yeah. it. And tell us about this game from a knowledge standpoint, would you? Sure. From a knowledge standpoint, Carolina had the first overall pick and drafted a rookie quarterback. Uh, Atlanta selected a rookie running back. Their quarterback comes into their his second year. Uh, it's going to be a defensive, low-scoring game, but I believe Atlanta, um, also from a knowledge standpoint, will win this game. Okay, so from an intuitive and knowledge standpoint, would you make that one of your best bets of the week if I were to ask you? Is no, I think, it's, I think it's going to be a really close game uh, and could turn either way, but I do have Atlanta. Yeah, I have the feeling that Carolina is a young and up-and-coming up team, too. Absolutely, they do. Their their offense will struggle a little bit. They've got some injuries, I know, on the start on their starting unit. So give them give them six or seven games, they'll probably be uh, a pretty good young team. Okay, and on we go, David. Okay, the next game is Cincinnati Bengals at Cleveland Browns. The Bengals on the road are favored here by two and a half points. Over under is 47 and a half. Take us through this one, Jason. So uh, this one <laughs> coming, came through a little tough. Uh, I got orange at first. Both teams wear orange. Uh, yeah, right. they do. <laughs> they do. So I, I asked for a little clarity with that. And um, I don't know. If you know who Brownie is, the Cleveland Browns mascot. Mascot. Little guy started dancing on that orange. So uh, I'm going with Cleveland to win this game at home. Now I noticed a, a, a look on your face that makes me think in your informed pick is going to be different. Uh, my informed pick, and I think anybody's informed pick, would say that Cincinnati will win this game. However... Uh, Joe Burrow, the starting quarterback for Cincinnati, hasn't practiced in six weeks. Well, he practiced this last week, but had sat out six weeks with a uh, calf strain. Still questionable for the game. They're not going to want to run him out there. 
the f entire game unless they have a big lead. I just think Cleveland upgraded their defense enough to hold on to this one at home. I'm a big Joe Burrow fan. What do you think the line would be if, if, if we're certain he would play? If it was certain he would play and uh, and healthy with no questions, I think he'd probably be looking at more like a four to four and a half point spread. Got you. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. So Cleveland's still predicted to do something then. Oh yeah, yeah. Cleveland is uh, is going to be a a decent team. I think they're a little overrated. However, their defense is better. Okay. One of the sad sack franchises like the. Lions, but in the 90s, they had uh, quite a bit of success. Yes, they did. Okay, David. Third game is Jacksonville Jaguars at Indianapolis Colts. Jason, what are you feeling? Right away on this one. Uh... <clears throat> yeah, I just had to check in. You know, I get a lot of colors. And when these colors are similar, sometimes they'll just give me a color. I've got to dig in. Let me get, give me more, give me more. But I will tell All you, right. the color blue that I got to start was more of a teal than the royal blue. And Jacksonville will win this game on the road. Uh, hey. Okay. Okay. And uh, Jacksonville, like you said, on the road, they're giving five points. They are. And and it's a 45 point over under. Do you want to tell us a little about a little bit about the game and educate us? Absolutely. In Indianapolis uh, is a team that was on the rise up until about two years ago, and they started to fall precipitously. They have a rookie, unproven quarterback who only started one year in college. Their superstar running back is sitting out for the first four games and may never play for them again um, in a contract dispute. Uh, the team, new coach, new everything, and it's going to take them a while to gel. Jacksonville has had this nucleus gelling for two seasons, and they're ready to make um, a pretty big leap. I think this game will prove that. Okay. And how did you got that pick as well? Okay. And on we go. David, take us through the next one. All right, Marshall. Up next is Tampa Bay Buccaneers at Minnesota Vikings. Obviously, to Lions fans, this one has meaning. That's right. Uh, Minnesota at home is giving six with a 45 and a half over under. Uh, in my reality, even though you picked them intuitively to win this division, Minnesota is a shell of the team that limped into the playoffs last year. But you tell me what your, what your perspective is. Uh, I, I did not have to spend but about a tenth of a second on this game. I immediately got so I went to the went to the Renaissance Festival on Saturday, and this weekend is the Vikings weekend at the Renaissance Festival. I very quickly got a lot of Viking images. Uh, Minnesota is going to win this game. I think it's going to be pretty big. Okay, and from a knowledge standpoint, what do you say about the game? From a knowledge standpoint, Tampa Bay uh, is probably three or four losses away from selling everyone they can. They have. They have two wide, well, one wide receiver who's very angry about contract dispute. Uh, their quarterback starting this game is Baker Mayfield, who you said Minnesota is a shell of themselves from last year. Baker Mayfield is a shell of himself of what we've seen in the past. So yeah. Tampa Bay is going to have a very difficult season, and it's going to start out pretty ugly with this game. I think Minnesota is a lot better still than most people are giving credit. Fair enough. And... I say Baker Mayfield may still have something left in the tank. I, I, I'm not a fan of his, but I think he's talented. I'm a University of Oklahoma guy. I want him to do well. <laughs> okay. David, let me turn the Thanks. music down. It's it's kind of crushing everybody. Hold on. There we go. Thanks, Marshall. Uh, up next is uh, Tennessee Titans at New Orleans Saints. Okay. Saints at home giving three. 40 and a half, uh, the lowest point total we've had yet. Jason, uh, or actually David Prompton. Jason, Jason, what signals are you getting? There you go. So, as I said, I get I get colors, I get pictures, I get images. And uh, the first image I got on this one was a, a tug of war rope uh, going back and forth, back and forth. 
Still asking for clarification. This one has got, this may be inside that three point prediction, the Saints being favored. Um, I'm checking in. They're they're leading me towards the red, white, and blue of the Tennessee Titans logo. So we're going to pick Tennessee on this one. Okay. And you're informed uh, breakdown? Well, I'll tell you, I just had to have a little argument with Spirit on that one because my informed breakdown says, no, no, New Orleans is going to win this game. They're the better defensive team. But I'm leaning towards those colors with the with the the psychic pick. So, the informed knowledge I have, New Orleans gets a huge upgrade at quarterback with Derek Carr going to New Orleans. Tennessee is in turmoil at the quarterback position. For sure, for sure. However, the running back position is going to come. It's going to be. That's what this game is going to be based on: is defense and the running game. And I think Derek Henry is better than Jamal Williams. And that's where it's going to come down to is who can uh, possess the ball longer. And Tennessee will do that at the end of the game. Okay. Hey, here we go. Up next is San Francisco 49ers at Pittsburgh. San Francisco. We talked about this, Jason, one of the better teams in the NFL on the road. They're giving two and a half points point total, a low 41. David, cue him in. Jason, what are you feeling? Oh. First thing I'm feeling, I just got the message. Um, they are not who they seem. And it's directed towards the San Francisco 49ers. You're oh. missing your best player. <laughs> they're, they're telling me the Steelers are going to win this game. <laughs> it, the knowledge standpoint. <laughs> I was just gonna say there was there was some bleed. There was some bleed there. Oh my god, they are they're fighting right now. Uh, no, Pittsburgh intuitively is gonna win this game. What okay. they're ta- what I know about San Francisco, we all know about San Francisco is a tremendous defense, a great running attack, probably the best two way running back in the game in McCaffrey. Questions at quarterback with Brock Purdy. Yes, he had a great end of the season last year, but who is he really? Um, And you're missing your best defensive player in Bosa. Um, Whether or not he plays is very questionable right now in a contract dispute. The Steelers are going to make a momentous leap this year in terms of their record. So just watch out for that. Okay. Here we go. Next game is uh, Arizona Cardinals at Washington Commanders. Washington giving seven, giving a touchdown at home. Uh, 38 points is the over-under, which is, again, now a new low for the week. Jason? David, you going to cue him? Yep. What are you feeling on this one, Jason? Yeah, I love it. They're giving me messages this week, like lines. Uh, and this, <laughs> the line I just got was, this is going to be ugly. <laughs> mm. And they also tell me, in ugly game, Washington is going to win this. They're going to command it and win it. <laughs> nice. Got it. And from a knowledge standpoint, I know Arizona poached at least one of our coaches, I think. Correct. But they're a very much rebuilding team. They signed who they signed? Kyler Murray is that their quarterback? Kyler Murray is their quarterback. Yeah. However, he he is out. Um, they have not decided who they're starting at quarterback yet. They just sh- just signed former Detroit Lions quarterback Josh Dobbs, uh, where they traded for him. But they also had this rookie by the name of Clayton Toon out of uh, University of Houston. Phenomenal college numbers. So we're probably going to see both of them play. And when you see two quarterbacks play at the beginning of a season, you can't expect a whole lot. Washington's mm-hmm. coming in with a young quarterback who's going to have his first, well, second start um, on Sunday. He got to start the last game of the season last year. And I just think their defense is a lot better than Arizona's. So knowledge says Washington will probably cover that seven by a lot. And David, just to catch you up, he mentioned Joshua Dobbs. Uh, Jason, correct me if I'm wrong, but there was we had this guy – and they promoted him to the active uh, roster. And okay. I was like, oh, are they going to run some flea flickers, some trick plays? 
No, they just wanted to give him more money that week. Yeah. They were trying to say, stay with the Lions. Here, you'll get a... Wow. And, and somebody poached him. Who was it that poached him last year? Uh... I'm trying to think who just tra- who just traded him to Arizona, and uh, you know one of these things that just like um, wait a minute, uh, it, it'll come to me. But I'm drawing. But yeah, he he he's Tennessee. got ability. He's mobile. But so uh, Holmes liked him. I don't think it would have changed his draft, uh, his draft you know picking. But but he yeah. did like this cat. Yeah, it, cool. You know he's got a, a degree in in uh, rocket science as well. So super smart cat. Oh, interesting. Sweet. Yeah, I liked him too. Okay, so next one. Here we go. Next game is the Houston Texans at Baltimore Ravens. And it's Baltimore giving an astonishing 10 points in a league that strives for parity. At home, Baltimore is giving 10 points to Houston. Uh, well, I, there's a lot I could say about the Houston Texans that I do know that I'll I'll leave for Jason. Uh, the over-under 43-and-a-half, David Kuhlman. What are you feeling, Jason, on this one? As soon as you 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 read the the game Houston at Baltimore, uh, I'm gonna go back. I, like I said, I went to the Renaissance Festival on Saturday. They had a <laughs> raven in a cage. And, oh uh, wow! Having been a Game of Thrones fan, you know I I saw it. I was like, oh, we gotta go check out the raven. They showed me that raven and I heard the one eye raven. It's the raven's big in this game. Okay, and from a knowledge standpoint, you know I have a lot of problems with with Houston of my own but tell me what from a knowledge standpoint you, where you stand uh looking at houston rookie quarterback out of ohio state um he's going to get the start their quarterback for the last couple of years davis mills who's a stanford uh cat um i will probably see some playing time i just think houston's in disarray a um, lot of young players they brought in players to challenge the young players when that happens that usually doesn't go well usually um, causes more discord um, and Baltimore solidified their receiving game, gave Lamar Jackson a lot of money and that defense is ridiculously good. So it's, I think 10 points is probably an easy cover this week for Baltimore. And you will hear me call a double digit cover rare. Um, it doesn't happen a whole lot in the NFL. You bet it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I agree with you. I'm not a, at all a Houston fan. Okay. The city is right. the city different. All yeah. right, next one. Okay, Jason, here we go. There's, here's another game that the Lions fans would be interested in. It's Green Bay Packers. It's Green Bay Packers at Chicago Bears. Right, an interdivisional rivalry, rivalry that the Lions fans will have their eye on. Chicago is giving one point at home. So that means the oddsmakers are leaning a little bit toward Green Bay. 43 is the over-under. What do you have to say, Jason? Kind of going back and forth on this one, so I think that one point's pretty accurate. Um, I'm going Chicago. I was getting I was getting more of the C than a piece of cheese. So apparently the cheese is going to be my Green Bay um, image all year long, but... That uh, that black and red C or black and orange C came up more than uh, than the cheese. I'm going with Chicago with this one. Okay, and Jordan Love uh, is is Jordan Love to Aaron Rodgers as Aaron Rodgers was to Brett Favre. Is he the next guy to step in? I think he's the next guy to step in. I'm not going to say anybody's going to reach Aaron Rodgers levels. However, um, when you get three years to sit behind Aaron Rodgers and learn. Um, I think you pick up a lot of the game uh, and you have two really good second year uh, receivers there. Green Bay is going to be good. This one's just going to be very tight in Chicago. Um, In Chicago, I don't know. I I think a lot of people think they're going to take a step forward this year. Um, Looking at them, I think they made moderate improvements. They'll be a little bit better. I feel the same way. Same way. Yeah. And they're very young, even if even if everything goes well, they're very young. They're very young. And running back okay. no question for them. So Right, right. We have we have their guy now. Yep. So but okay. they, I do think they will win this game. Okay. David? Okay. Here's a team that I'm still getting used to saying the name. Las Vegas Raiders at Denver Broncos. Same with me, David. Denver at home giving three and a half so about what you'd expect for a home team 44 points the over under david kuhlman 
Jason, tell me about the feelings you're getting. This is another one of those games. Uh, it's going to be a close one. Um, and they're showing me a lot of skull and crossbones and the uh, Raiders black and silver. So I'm going with Las Vegas to win this game. And what about from a knowledge standpoint? You know, the Raiders, they're, they're like all-time franchise quarterback in terms of since they've been at Las Vegas is was Derek Carr, right? And then right. and then they, they – yeah. So who is their guy now? So it's Jimmy Garoppolo. So – Oh, they got Garoppolo. Uh, Garoppolo. Wow. And the head coach of New England is – or excuse me, the head coach of Las Vegas is the former New England offensive coordinator who – really, really pushed to have Belichick bring Garoppolo into New England. So I think that, you know, this is a positive move overall for Las Vegas. It just may not seem that way at first. You're not going to get, you're not going to get Garoppolo throwing for 4,000, 4,500 yards like Carr would, but he will manage the game a little bit better. And gotcha. Den Denver, you know, Sean Payton coming in as a head coach, Maybe he can salvage Russell Wilson, but Russell Wilson looked like 10% of what we look we looked for Russell Wilson to be last year. So was that really Nathaniel Hackett being so bad as a head coach? We're going to find out. We're going to find out a lot about Denver in the first three games. Okay. Does Ru How many years was Russell Wilson in Seattle? Eight or, eight or nine? Eight or nine, yeah. No. So he doesn't have a chance at the Hall of Fame, does he? Oh, I think he does, but he's, he's got to have a good year this year to make up for last year. Yeah, yeah, okay. David? All right, Jason. We have, uh, next up, we have Philadelphia Eagles at New England. Now, you might have heard on our podcast, David and I talking about New England. I take <laughs> right. a bit of satisfaction in the fact that at home, New England uh, is, Philadelphia is still favored by four points. Uh, 45 is the over-under. Jason, what signals are you getting? <laughs> I went to check in and while David was reading the game, and uh, I got the phrase back, are you even asking us? Uh, Philadelphia's going this game. <laughs> Philadelphia's this is the one game. where if you don't have bleed, then you really haven't followed the NFL. Right, no. Yeah, this there's just, you know, I get guides and they talk to me and uh, they're like, really, you're just gonna, you're gonna ask us this one? You know the answer. Like, okay, yes I do. Yeah, I think the less, the less said about this one, the better. Although I might want to watch it to see Philadelphia beat up on New England. So that'll be interesting. And you know, New England's just one of those teams you always expect them to do well. It's gonna be a rough year. It's gonna be a rough year for them. Hmm. I do like their quarterback. Jones is, is it seems like a pretty well. good quarterback. Yeah, David. All right, here we go, Jason. We have Miami Dolphins at Los Angeles Chargers. Chargers at home giving three. Uh, this is a 51 point, uh, 51 point uh, over under. So they're expecting a high scoring game, which makes sense. Uh, cue them in on the intuitive and then we'll talk about the knowledge. David? What signals are you getting, Jason? Oh, we're, go we're going back and forth on this one. There's, some, there's gonna be some close interesting games this week. Uh, it started out. I'm gonna go back to the you know first image. Got to trust that first image that I get, and I got a lightning bolt. So I'm gonna go with a little LA Chargers on on this game intuitively. <laughs> okay, and from a knowledge standpoint, I know Miami's up and coming. Go ahead, David. I'm sorry. No, no, you know, you go ahead. So I know Miami's up and coming from a knowledge standpoint. T take us through. Um, from a knowledge standpoint. Uh, running backs, a position where Miami is going to struggle. They just put one of their top two guys on the IR for the year. They've got three backups that are all hurt. So they're pretty much down to one and a half running backs for this game. And uh, you never know when Tua is going to get hurt for Miami. So Yeah, uh, unfortunately, that's yeah. true. And, and Justin Herbert, although he threw for over 4,700 yards last year, tore, uh, played with a torn pack most of the season. So uh, he's fully recovered. I expect a lot from the Chargers. Okay. David? All right, Jason. Next game is Los Angeles 
Rams and at Seattle Seahawks. Now, David, as a graphic designer, just take a look at that new Los Angeles logo. My guess is they don't want to give you the impression of a battering ram anymore with with all the concussion stuff. So they've kind of redesigned it so you can barely see the Rams part. Yeah, Do you, you agree? Just, yes, you could just uh, you could just make it out. Not my favorite. It's a little commercial. It's a little feels a little eighties, like a yeah. little. Uh, you know, I. Uh, uh, so it's not really one of my favorite redesign redesigns. It, it's the same, and and I, but I, and I love the old logo, but I don't like the image of that. That's too scary for me. So, all right, Jason, David, cue him in. Okay, Jason, what signals are you getting? Well, I, I appreciate you guys actually talking there for a minute because uh, it came down. No, to, you're still getting it. <laughs> you're still well, getting downloaded. Well, no, I, I. I was trying to figure out what I was seeing, and I was getting both head coaches, Sean McVay and Pete Carroll. And uh, the thing that came through uh, heavier was Pete Carroll chewing on his gum on the sideline there. I'm going with Seattle <laughs> with this game. Pete Carroll's a guy I have a lot of mixed feelings about. If I were casting yeah. for a, a, a football coach, he's my guy. Yeah. Uh, but I know he jumped ship in college right before their program got all sorts of violations. So. Sure did. Yeah, I have a lot of mixed emotions about him. Okay. Uh, and that one, by the way, is Seattle at home giving five uh, and a 45 point over under. David? We're getting close to the end, Marshall. Uh, the next game is uh, Dallas Cowboys at New York Giants. These are two teams who made the playoffs last year. Uh, Dallas, of course, well, I shouldn't say of course, but to me seemed like the better team. Uh, Jason? So, yep, I'm, I'm, I'm trusting them on this one. This is one of those get, that I kind of go back to the sports. Marshall. Yeah. Uh, going with the Giants on this one. Get, Giants on this. The yeah. colors are similar. What signals did you get? Uh, I got the red um, because you're right. The colors are very similar. Um, and I wasn't getting the star. Normally for Dallas, they will show me that blue and a star. And I was getting the blue, and then they threw a little red in there for me. So it's got to be a close <laughs> And that's a Giants. Yep. Okay. And, yep. So Giants. And that one is uh, Giants are at home. Dallas gets three and a half. Sorry, right. Dallas gives three and a half. So they're definitely favored. They and are. point total is 46 and a half. And the final game is our Monday night game. David? Buffalo Bills at New York Jets. Oh, you didn't get that pick? Giants. Okay. okay. So this one is. Uh, Jets are at home. Buffalo's getting two and a half. So again, no surprise. Buffalo is a pretty dominant uh, team and was a surprise to uh, they got upset in the playoffs last year. Uh, cue them in intuitively, David. Jason, here's a, this is the last one. What signals are you getting? Uh, so the first thing I got uh, been watching a lot of hard knocks with the Jets, right? <laughs> right. And the first thing, the first thing I got was that Aaron Rodgers' little sly smile he has. Wow. I, you know, he goes around and he just looks like that guy who knows a lot more than he's given given out to you. Uh, so I'm going to pick the Jets for this game. Um, All right. Yeah, I know that uh, they come into the season. We just don't know what to expect from them. Uh, I think you can expect to win in this game. And I think if I recall from last season, the Jets have an up-and-coming defense. Is that correct? They do. They had the defensive player of the year in Sauce Gardner. Uh, they added to the defensive line in the linebacker room. I think they're going to be a pretty good defensive team again. And now you have a quarterback who can run that offense. All right. And I'm going to ask you a question. And then David ask him what signals he's getting. Final question. The pick of the week. David, cue him in. Jason, what signals are you getting? This scares me to make this my pick of the week. We already talked about it. Double, <laughs> double digit point spreads are tough, but Baltimore. Wow. I, I got that Raven again right away. I think that's the easy pick of the week. I got goosebumps. You're going to make me watch that game. Plus, the, Ra <laughs> the Ravens are probably my 
besides the Giants, are my second favorite other team besides the Lions. Yes, I, I agree with you. I'm a big Ravens fan myself. All right. Anything anyone else needs to say to be complete? And Heather, thank you for all the pick filling in. Anyone else? Anyone else needs to say anything to be complete? I can't wait. I can't wait to watch. <laughs> yeah, excited to and watch. To, and we'll see how you introduce yourself next week. This is we're doing the. It was it even going to play. Let's see. It looks like. Oh, there we go. So, Jason, thank you once again <laughs> for an evening of miss. Oh wait, Heather has something. Yes. I have a question. You have a question. Yes. Sorry, that's my son's bedtime alarm. Yes. Oh, she wants to know if we'll go through the results next week. I think that's a good idea. If I have a a positive winning percentage, absolutely. (laughs) If he has a positive, you heard that. Okay. Okay, good. (laughs) Listen, this is very enjoyable for me. And I'm I looking forward it. to connecting on an intuitive basis every week. I have lots of little tidbits and maybe we can engage in some conversation. I love it. Perfect. Thank you guys right. so much. Our pleasure. And you, the audience you, members, Jason. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Heather, for Heather, for <laughs> me, for David, and for our medical intuitive and psych- psychic Jason and new friend, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week. See ya. See ya.